In this lesson, we are going to talk about the Cartesian plane and the distance formula. So we will plot points in a coordinate plane. We will find the distance between two points in that plane. We will find the midpoint of a line segment connecting two points, and we'll translate points in a coordinate plane. So let's get started with the distance formula. So you should we recall from the Pythagorean theorem, so I'll use a little highlighter here. So the Pythagorean theorem says that when you have a right triangle with the hypotenuse being a length of C, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So when we're on a coordinate plane, let's just talk about A. So we'll just say that this leg is A and we'll say that this leg is B. And notice how they use absolute value here. Um, that's an important piece because lengths of a triangle are positive. So you can't have a negative length. So you're gonna subtract your X values. You'll subtract your X values. Let me highlight that for you. You'll subtract your X values to get your length A, okay? Then you're going to subtract your y values, so the two y values, to get your length of b. a squared plus b squared equals, and then your distance would be c. So they're using d for distance, which is equal to c in c squared. And that's really how we get our formula for our distance formula, our distance formula says that the distance between two points on a coordinate plane, x1, y1 being one point, and x2, y2 being another point, is the square root of the difference in the x values squared. So this is your a squared, and the distance in the y's is your b, and then you'll square it. And remember that distance is always positive, but the square is gonna work that out. So even if you have a negative number for A, when you square it, it's going to end up being positive. Same thing with B. When you square it, it ends up being positive. And then D is equal to C, and there you go. So we're gonna find the distance between the two points, negative two, one, and three, four. So let's do that. So what I like to do is I like to rewrite the points vertically. This way I can see my x values and my y values without having to work left, right, horizontally and make a mistake. And the distance is equal to the square root of the difference of the x's. So I'm gonna do this in yellow. The difference of the x's from negative two to three, I can already tell what that dif distance or that difference is. That difference is five but I'm gonna say negative two minus three squared plus, and then the distance, which is the difference of the y values. So from one to four, I already know that that's gonna be a difference or a distance of three, but I'll put one minus four and then quantity squared. I'll highlight that in green. So the difference of your x values squared, the difference of your y values squared. Now, I'll be honest, I usually go straight to this step right here, negative five squared is 25, negative three squared is nine. So I would have had the square root of 25 plus nine in my work, and then I would have had the square root of 34 for an answer. So distance is equal to the square root of 34 units. Now, with that being said, it's important for you when you're not dealing with integer values or when you're dealing with larger numbers, larger values, that you know how to do this very first step right here. So just make sure that you know how to do that very first step because that step models the formula. Okay, we're gonna verify that we have a right triangle. So we're gonna use the distance formula to show that the points two, one, four, zero, and five, seven are vertices of a right triangle. So we know that when we have a right triangle, if I have a right triangle, 
then I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to find the distance between, let's just make this a, b, c. I'm going to find the distance from a to b. And the distance from a to b, from 2 to 4, that's 2 squared, or that's 2, and then we'll square it. And then 1 to 0, that's a distance of 1. So that's 1 squared. And that's the square root of 5. Now I'm not sure which one of these is a, b, or c. The largest side would be potentially the hypotenuse if this is indeed a right triangle. So the next length, b to c, well from 4 to 5, that's a difference of 1, so 1 squared. And then the difference from 0 to 7, that's a 7, so that's 7 squared. So that's the square root of 50, which is definitely bigger than 5, right? For sure. Okay, now we've got AC. So the difference from 2 to 5 is 3. So we'll have 3 squared. And then the difference from 1 to 7 is 6. So we'll have 6 squared. So that's 9 and 36. 9 and 36 is indeed 45. So this is potentially side A. This is potentially side C. And this would potentially be side B because C has to be the largest side. So we're going to take the square root of 5 and square it, the square root of 45 and square it, and then is it indeed equal to the square root of 50 squared? If this is true, then we have a right triangle. So I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to highlight a little bit. So side A, right? is that right there, so that's where the square root of 5 came from. Side B was another smaller leg, right? Couldn't be the biggest side, so that's right there. And then side C, we'll say was the biggest side because the biggest side is potentially the hypotenuse. And in this case, you're going to see that when you take the square root of 5 and square it, you end up with 5. Square root of 45 and square it, you end up with 45. And that is indeed equal to the square root of 50 squared, which is 50. 5 plus 45 is 50. Therefore, that's what these three dots mean. Therefore, we have a, not just a triangle, we have a right triangle.